In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to create the sign design that you see on the screen. We'll also take a look at the wide variety of tools to create, edit, and distort the vectors. Plus, we'll also demonstrate the importing of a hand-drawn image. So this is where we're going to end up, but let's have a look at creating this ourselves. So let's first go to File and Close. Okay, so let's look at creating a new job sheet. So let's come up to create a new file, and we want our job width to be 19. Uh, we want our height to be nine. Uh, we're gonna keep our thickness to be 0.75 inches, and we want the XY datum to be in the center of the workpiece. Okay, so with our job sheet set up, we need to start looking at adding in some vectors. So let's come up to our draw circle tool, and right away you can see we are presented with the center point. I actually wanna keep this at zero, zero, so this will be in the center of our job piece. If you notice, if I hover my left, uh, sorry, if I hover my mouse pointer over the middle of the worksheet here, you get the X coordinate of zero, zero and the Y coordinate of zero, zero. So that's very important. And I'm happy with it being on diameter. I want it to be eight inches in this case. So let's just hit create. And now you'll see that it's added a circle uh, of an eight inch diameter in the middle of the worksheet with the center being at X zero, Y zero, which you can also define up here if you need to. Okay, so that said, let's close out this form for the moment. Okay, so now I need to import a rectangle. So let's come back up to our create vectors and click on our uh, draw rectangle tool. And at the moment, it's got the anchor point at 0, uh, 0.0012. I don't want that, I want it to be zero. So let's just enter that in. Same with Y, let's change that to zero. And that's great. And you'll notice that you can manually adjust the size of your rectangle. So if we were to use these parameters here, it would draw a rectangle on the screen here from the middle point uh, uh, with 24 inches wide and uh, 12 inches in height. But I don't want to do that at the moment. Instead, I want to use a different way of creating our rectangle. So I'm going to come over to the middle of the software. I'm going to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, then hit the left mouse click, holding it down. I'm just going to drag and you'll see that the rectangle is now growing from the center of our worksheet or the anchor point which is at zero, zero. Now I wanna come out to a width of 18, which is just there, and I want my height to be four. And let's just adjust that a little bit so we get that, and there we are. If I let that go, you'll now notice that that change has been reflected on the left-hand side in the form here for the draw rectangle form, where I've got a width of 18 and a height of four inches. So let's just hit apply, close that out. And if I click anywhere on the form now, you'll notice that I have a rectangle with my uh, desired width and height. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at modifying uh, our rectangle here uh, because I wanna make some adjustments to it. So with our uh, rectangle selected, I'm just gonna hit N on the keyboard as in N for node. And you'll notice that we're now in node editing mode and we've got our four points on the corners of our rectangle. But I actually wanna add in a couple of points. If I hover over uh, the top and the center of our a rectangle here, I can just go ahead and right click on that center point and insert a point. You'll notice it's got I next to it. And this means if I were to hover over a point and hit I on the keyboard, it would insert a point as well. And if I right click on that point again, come down to properties, you'll notice that it's given me an absolute value of X00 and Y 2.0. Now in this case, I know I want this to be a little bit lower. So I'm just gonna delete that value and enter 1.5 hit apply and you'll notice that point has now moved half an inch lower. And we can just do the same down here. So if we hover our mouse pointer over the uh, bottom of our rectangle here and hit I on the keyboard, this will insert a point. Now you can actually just click on this point and drag it up to your position. So in this case, 0, uh, 0.5, or you can also hit 0 0.5 and then enter on the keyboard and you'll notice that it is now uh, moved our point up to where it needs to be. So with that said, I'm just gonna hit escape to exit node editing mode, and we can look at uh, adjusting the design a bit further. Okay, so next I want to offset our adjusted rectangle vector inwards. So to do that, let's just make sure it's selected. You'll see that is uh, indicated by this dashed or dotted line. Come over to our offset and layout tools and choose the offset tool. Now I want to uh, offset this inwards, and I want to do it by 0.8 inches, which I've already set here. So if you just go ahead and click offset, 
and you'll see we now have an offset vector 0.8 inches from the original adjusted uh, rectangle. I'm just going to close that out for the moment. Now I want to make some further adjustments here where I want to put in some guidelines to help me cut away some of the vectors that I don't need in the middle here. So let's come up to our drawing uh, tools and use the draw line tool. And let's just hover the mouse pointer over the point where the outer uh, rectangle meets the circle. So let's just click on that here. And you'll see that it snaps to the bottom here as well. Now, importantly, you can actually left click here and then hit space on your keyboard. And that will allow you to now freely move your mouse pointer. It won't be drawing a line for the moment. You can come up to the top right here. And again, just left click here, left click at the bottom after it snaps to that point and you can just close out that form. And now we've got some guidelines to help us when we're going to trim away some of these vectors that we don't need in the middle. Now to trim away these vectors, we actually need to come over to the edit objects and choose the interactive trim tool, which is uh, donated by the scissor symbol here. And I'm just going to come over, hover my mouse pointer over these lines. You'll notice there's a scissors open indicating that I can cut this away. So I'm just going to click on that and that cuts that line away. Click on this one and that looks great. Now, I also want to offset my circle inwards. So let's again select that, come over to our offset tools. Now this time we want to go in by 1.1. Let's hit offset. And there we are. We now have our offset circle as well. Okay, so again, I'm going to look at trimming some of these vectors out. So let's come over to our interactive trim tool. And this time I'm going to click on the inside of the circle here, get rid of that. And let's just get rid of that as well. And let's just close that out. And also I can get rid of these guidelines now because I don't need them because I've used them. So let's just click on those, hit delete on the keyboard. And this one here, hit delete on the keyboard. And that looks great. Okay, so let's have a look at moving some of these vectors onto different layers for ease of management when we're looking at this project. So let's just click on our left-hand side vector here and on our right-hand side. Click on this inner circle vector here. I'm just going to right click on the vector that's selected, choose move to layer, new layer, and I want to call this one construction. And I don't want this to be visible at the moment. So if I uncheck this box, you'll notice that when I hit OK, the vectors will disappear from the screen. And that's because they're on their own individual layer. Now, I also want to make some changes before I change the name of this layer as well. So I'm just going to click on the vector here click on this one and I just want the outline of these vectors. I don't want these middle uh, vec uh, kind of lines here in the middle of these vectors. So I could use the interactive trimming tool in this scenario to cut away these lines, but it'll be much easier if I use another tool instead called weld, which will give us just a perimeter of these uh, vectors. And there we are. You can see I'm now just left with one outline. And as such, let's uh, reflect that change in our layers name. So if we come up to our layers and we're going to change the name here to outlines and I'm just going to hit enter and our change has taken effect. Now this is on our outline layer and if I come up to the top and turn on our construction you can see there's our old construction parts as well. Now before I move any further I do want to offset this inwards as well so let's again select our outline vector come over to our offset and this time I actually want to go in by just 0.2 and I actually want to create a sharp offset corners because I want a nice crisp corner here uh, when we offset this inwards. And I want to make sure that the new uh, vector is selected because I'll be offsetting that as well. So let's just hit offset. You'll notice, as I said, the new vector is selected because we've got this box uh, checked here. So with that, I can now offset this as well. And I want to go by 0.1 and let's just offset that. And there we are, we now have our shapes for our outline. Okay, so finally, I'm actually gonna add in a new layer, which is going to be called text. So if I come up to the top here, and click add new layer, let's call that text. And I'm gonna make that the active layer. I'm just gonna hit enter on the keyboard. I'm gonna turn off our outlines, turn on our construction, because we're gonna be looking at adding some text in, in line with the vectors we have on the screen at the moment. So we're gonna add in the five star coffee text with some star vectors as well. So the five will be on the left-hand side here where you'll have the five uh, matching the shape of this rectangle here. Same with the star, which will be distorted to match the shape on the right-hand side here. The coffee that will follow the curve of this circle and the same with the stars, which will also follow the curvature of the circle as well. 
So let's have a look at adding some of those components in. Okay, so first let's add in the component for our star. So let's come up to create vectors. I'm gonna choose the draw star tool and we're gonna come into the middle of our uh, worksheet and left click on the middle of the worksheet, hold that down, drag it out, and there we are, we have our star, nice and big there. But I wanna change that to be a bit smaller, so I'm gonna change it to about half of that. So let's go down to 0 0.5 inches, hit apply. And if I zoom into the star, you'll now see that we've got some angled lines here. And I don't actually want these to be angled. I'd prefer if these lines here were actually straight. So how do we affect that? Well, we actually come over to the inner radius percentage in our form. And we want to change this to 38.2. Hit apply. And there we go. We've got some nice straight lines on our star now. So we can now close out that form. Zoom back to our drawing limits. And now we're going to have a look at copying this vector across this top vector here. So we have a sort of banner of stars. So let's select our top vector with our star already selected. Let's come across to our offset and layout tools and use the copy along vectors tool. And we want to have uh, a number of copies and we want to have five. And we're just going to go ahead and click copy. Now you'll notice that it's taken our star vector and it's copied it along this line because this was the other selected vector but we can see that the stars are upside down on this at the moment. So there's a great option to fix that. So if you come over to the reverse direction over here in our form, check that box, hit copy again, and there we go. We now have our stars straight on our top vector. So let's close out that form for the moment, come across and we can just make sure that this line is now deselected because we still need this, but we will select this original star and let's delete that. So we're going to look into adding some text now. So let's go over to create vectors and select our draw text tool. And you'll notice there's a, a text box represented just down here. I'm going to go over into our form and we're going to type in five, hit return on the keyboard, star, return on the keyboard again, and coffee. Okay, now I do want to change the font. So let's change it to something more appropriate. So in this case, I'm actually going to choose Times uh, New Roman. Now you can actually hit T on the keyboard as well to bring up any of the font uh, that begin with a T. And there we are. And I want the text height to be uh, 0.8 inches. So I'm just going to close that out for the moment. And you'll notice that the uh, the text is not where I need it to be currently. So let's hover my mouse pointer over the text after clicking on it first. We can just drag that up to the middle and it will snap to the middle there and we can let go. Okay, so with that now in place, I also want to make some adjustments because I actually want uh, my text to be separate. I want the five, the star, and the coffee to be on separate lines, but at the moment they're all grouped together. So what you can actually do is right click and you can break text blocks into lines. So if I click that option, you'll now notice that I have the five, the star, and the coffee as their own separate vectors. So I'm going to now take the five, I'm going to click on it again, hover my mouse pointer over the middle, and I'm going to take it and line it up with the middle of this side here. And you'll notice that my cursor has snapped to the middle of that section there. So let's just let that go. And we'll do the same with the star. So again, click on it, click in the middle, hold that down and drag it until that snaps to the center. Let me show you one more time. There we are. And that looks great. Now with our coffee, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're actually going to put this onto this curve here. So first, let's select our coffee text and let's hold shift on our keyboard. Click on the curve we want to put the coffee onto. And now we're going to come over to the text on a curve tool and let's just click into that. Now right away, you'll notice that the coffee is actually backwards and upside down, but don't worry, we will address this. So what we want to do is actually put the text on the curve because we want the text actually follow on the curve itself, much like our stars up top here. And we want the text to be on the other side. And there we are. Now you'll notice there's a slider up here for text spacing. If you notice the F, the Fs and the coffee are quite close together here. So I can actually adjust that up here by moving this slider. And there we are. We can start to see that we can start spacing out this text on that curve and try to utilize as much of it as possible. Okay, so so far that looks pretty good. I'm just going to hit close on that for now. Now you'll notice that the coffee 
still has some spacing issues. For example, you'll notice that the E's have a large gap here, for example, compared to the F here and the F here. And we have a large gap between the O and the F here and the C and the F here. So we can actually address this using another one of our powerful tools, which is the edit space uh, spacing and curve tool. So if we come over to our text now, after selecting our tool, you'll notice if I hover my mouse pointer between the text here, you'll notice there's a uh, it's two arrows that are pointing inwards with a plus sign. Now if I click left click in between these letters, you'll notice they get closer together. Similarly, if I do that over here as well, and it will also take this into account and apply that change over here as well so that all the letters are then evenly spaced. So I'm just going to go ahead and click until I feel like that is more closely aligned and that looks pretty good to me at the moment. So with that, I'm just going to hit escape on the keyboard and that looks great. Okay, so with our text now in place, I want to have a look at now distorting our text. So you can see we have the five and the star here. We're actually going to take this text and distort it to match the shape of these rectangles that we made earlier. So to do that, we have to first highlight our five and we're going to have to select our bottom and top vector here. But as you can see, we've got this vector on the left hand side here that we don't need. So let's just click onto this uh, adjusted rectangle and let's hit N for node editing mode on the keyboard. And we're just going to go over to this very left hand side span. I'm just going to right click it and click delete span. You'll notice there's a shortcut key for this while you're in node editing mode. If you just hit D on the keyboard, this will also delete that span. And we're going to go ahead and do the same while we're still in node editing mode. We're going to come over to the right hand side and do the same with the star. If you recall, I can just hit D on the keyboard while hovering over that span to delete it. Okay, so let's exit node editing mode and let's have a look at now distorting our text. So first, if we select our five text, and we're going to select the bottom vector and hold shift to select the top vector as well. I'm going to come over to our distort selected objects tool. Now, in this scenario, we actually want to distort the uh, five between two curves. So let's choose this option here and let's hit apply. Now, right away, you'll notice there's an issue, which is that the five is now backwards. And that's actually because if you notice in the very bottom right hand corner of this adjusted rectangle, there is a green node and this indicates the start point of that vector. And you can see there's a little arrow here. If I zoom in, that indicates um, the travel uh, direction on this vector. So if I just zoom back out to our active limits and I'm going to close this form for the moment, I'm going to hit control Z on the keyboard to return that to its previous state. And we'll look at adjusting these vectors. So first things first, make sure your vector is selected and then we're going to hit N to enter node editing mode. And we're going to come over to the left hand node here, right click on it. And we're just going to make that the start point. And we'll do the same for the top here as well. Again, right click, make start point. Okay, so with that change made, let's hit escape on the keyboard. Again, select our five text, our bottom vector, our top vector, and go to back to distorted objects. And we're going to choose between two curves, hit apply, and that looks much better. So let's just close that for the moment. Now, if you look, you can actually see, if I zoom in a little bit, you can actually see that the uh, V is touching both the top and the bottom vectors, but because of that, the other vectors are slightly off the bottom here. You'll notice there's a gap at the bottom of these letters with the F, the I, and the E. So let's look at actually uh, adjusting this so we can get all of these touching the bottom line. So we we'll go back into our tool and let's go to transform object, make sure that is uh, selected. And you'll notice it gives you the uh, handles around your five text. So we'll just grab this bottom one and we'll just move it very slightly until our text reaches the bottom. And if you can see here, the F, the I and the E now touch that bottom line with the V slightly overlapping, but that shouldn't matter too much. Okay, so let's just go ahead and close that form for the moment. And now we're going to look at doing the same with our star text. So again, select your text, hold shift on the keyboard, select your vector, select your top vector, come back over to distort selected objects. Once again, between two curves, hit apply. And let's just zoom in to make sure if we're in line there. And as you can see, because of the S here and the A to an extent, um, it has pushed these other letters um, out a little bit. So they're not quite touching the lines. So again, 
transform objects, make sure that's selected. And we're just going to adjust this by going to this top handle here. And we're just going to bring the T and the R in line. And as you can see, they're touching the top line now. And we'll do the same at the bottom. And there we are. We now have our A, R, and T on that bottom line, as you can see, just touching it there. And that looks pretty good to me. Okay, so let's just close out that form for the moment and just hit F on our keyboard to view the entire worksheet. Okay, so before we move on to the next stage, which is to import our bitmap, let's just make sure that all of our text is on uh, the correct layer. So let's just select all of our text components and if we right click, move to layer, text, and now that will be on the text layer. You can just double check that by turning this off and on. And that looks great. And we also want to now edit our text for our five and our star because we want them to be separate entities. And the way you can do this is actually by baking them. So if we select our five first, then we're gonna come over to our distorted, uh, distort selected objects tool. And this time we're gonna choose this option here, which is bake distortion. Now when I click that, if I just click on the page now, so you'll see if I click on the F, it's now separate to the I, to the V, and the E. And I'll do the same over here. So if I click on our star, bake distortion, close that form out, you will now see the S, the T, the A, and the R are all now separate vectors. Okay, so let's have a look at now importing our uh, coffee bitmap. So let's just go up here. We can turn off our construction lines because we don't need those at the moment. We can turn off our text and we can make this the active layer and we can go up to our import bitmap and we can choose our coffee mug file. Okay, and as you can see, we now have uh, an image of a coffee mug with some beige, some off grayish and some darker colors uh, that we're gonna trace around to get the vector for the centerpiece of our sign. Now you can actually manually trace around this using node editing and you can draw some lines using the uh, powerful draw line tools over here to create a, a trace vector boundary around this. But we can also use some automated tools uh, to do this in a much easier fashion. But before we uh, use any of the tools to trace our bitmap, let's first make sure that our layer has the correct name. So right now, this is the active layer, the layer one here. So we're just gonna call this our center graphic. And let's just press enter on the keyboard. And there we are, we have our center graphic layer ready to go. Okay, so with our bitmap selected, let's come over here to our trace bitmap tool. Now this time we don't actually want to use color. We actually want to use black and white because there's not much color going on here. Um, but you can see if I increase the uh, number of colors uh, on this slider here, eventually it will get to a point where it's just one solid color. And similarly, if I go all the way back down here, you'll see less and less as well. So we want this to be around the midpoint so we can see uh, while working with us quite a nice uh, mix of colors we've got there at the moment between the the black and the white. Um, at the moment, moment, we don't have many sharp corners, so we want to keep this uh, nice and loose. Uh, in terms of noise, if I just zoom into our vector here, you can see uh, there are some rough areas here. For example, you can see some of these spots here, and you can see uh, a little bit of noise around the edges of the handle here as well. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, this noise uh, slider helps you adjust that and helps to smooth out some of this. So I'm actually going to set this quite high. I'm going to set it around seven. Now, the default fading here at the moment we've got, uh, this is just to allow you to see the uh, image clearer if you need to. But for now, I'm quite happy with it being around 50%. And I do want to group the vectors uh, when I trace around this bitmap. So for the moment, let's hit preview. And let's just zoom in here. And as you can see, we still got a little bit of noise around here and just here as well. We need to adjust these. So let's see if we if we turn this up just a little bit. And then if we preview that again, as you can see, it's not got rid of some of that noise um, around our uh, bitmap here. OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply for the moment and we'll close out this form now. If you come up to our layers tab here, you can see that we turn off our bitmap layer, leaves us just 
with our trace vector image. But I am going to uh, turn that bitmap layer back on because I want to have a look at um, adjusting some of these vectors um, to make sure that they actually fit the shape a little bit better and try and deal with some of these more jagged edges um, around here as well. So let's have a look at now editing this traced uh, bitmap. But first things first, we need to make sure that these vectors are ungrouped so we can edit them properly. So if we click on that, right click, and we're just gonna ungroup objects onto the groups layer. And the reason why we ungroup onto the groups layer is because it'll now place these onto the center graphic uh, layer, which is what we want because that is the layer we're currently working on. Okay, so let's have a look at now editing these. So if I just select one of these vectors, you'll notice now that they are separate. So for example, you see the dashed line just around this vector, and this is a separate vector, this is a separate vector as well. But for the moment, let's go into this one and hit N on our keyboard to enter node editing mode. And right away, you can see there is a lot of nodes we have to work with. Just to make that a bit clearer, let's just turn off our bitmap layer for the moment. And here we are, you can see how many nodes we're currently working with. So let's have a look at um, adjusting this and making uh, this easier to work with by uh, getting rid of some of these points so we can make some easier adjustments to our uh, vector. So if we just uh, hit escape on our keyboard and get out of node editing mode and we're going to select our vector and we're going to come over here and we're going to use this tool here, the curve fit, fit curves to selected vectors. Now as this is a very organic shape, we actually want to use Bezier curves and we want our tolerance to be 0 0.03. Uh, we don't want to keep sharp corners because we don't have many sharp corners here. It's a very organic shape. And we do want to replace the selected vectors. So for the moment, let's uh, zoom in so you can see some of the changes take effect. As you can see, there's many points here at the moment. So let's just hit our preview. And as you can see right away, it has reduced many of those points down, which makes this far easier to edit. Okay, so if I just hit um, cancel for the moment, and if we come out of that form, and now we're going to go and select all of our vectors, we will come back over to the tool, make sure it's on Bezier curves, 0.03 inches, replace selected vectors, hit the preview button, and let's hit OK. And as you can see now, if I hit N for node editing, there's far less points on the vectors in relation to earlier, where we had many points going around our top vector here. Okay, so let's now look at tweaking our vectors a little bit more and just getting some of the kinks out here, for example, and just over here, uh, just to smooth out our design just a little further. So if we just zoom right in, I'm gonna hit, uh, click on the um, vector that I need to work on. I'm gonna hit N on the keyboard to bring up node editing. And I am gonna turn back on the bitmap layer just so we can see uh, the original bitmap, so we can see what we're working with here. And you can notice that this point here, I can just manipulate this just a little bit to kind of smoothen out that curve a little bit more. And if it's still quite sharp, what you can actually do is uh, delete that or enter another point here so you can smooth this out. But I'm quite happy with how that looks at the moment. That looks quite nice. Let's make a slight adjustment here. And there we are, and let's just come out of that and let's just hit escape. And that looks much better, a much smoother curve there. And let's have a look at our right-hand side vector here. So what we can do here is if we just click on our vector, again, hit N on the keyboard to enter node editing mode. Now, what I want to actually do here is actually want to insert some points to help get a smoother kind of transition here. So if I just hover my mouse over here, right-click, insert a point, and maybe one just over here. And then I can come over and right click and delete this point. And there you go, you've got a much smoother transition there for your handle. If I press escape on the keyboard, you can see what I mean. There's a nice smooth transition, so that sharp uh, peak that we had earlier. Let's just have a quick look at the rest of our vectors just to make sure there's nothing else that is standing out. Well, we've got a slight kink down here. We can. Again, hit on the keyboard, and let's just have a look at adjusting this vector just a little bit, just to smooth that out a bit more. Uh, there we are, that looks great. Hit escape, let's have a look at what we're working with now. Yeah, that looks much better now. And with that, I think I'm happy to start looking at uh, saving this off for tool pathing. 
So for the moment, let's go back up to our layers tab. I'm going to turn off our bitmap layer. I'm going to start looking at putting our coffee uh, mug into the rest of our design. But before I do that, I'm actually going to look at just adjusting this just a very slight amount more on the handle here, because you can see there's a little bit of um, kind of thinness to this side of the handle here. So I'm just going to click on that, hit node editing again, and I'm just going to adjust this point here and just move it out slightly just to give it a bit more thickness on this side. There we are. Let's just adjust that little bit this side. And there we go. Okay. And now we can hit escape and hit F on our keyboard to come to our zoom limits. Okay. So let's look at turning on our layers and having a look what it all looks like together. So we'll turn on our outlines layer and our text layer. So we can have a look at everything all together. And let's now look at adjusting our coffee mug so that it fits neatly within uh, our uh, design here. So let's just click and drag our mouse pointer over the majority of our coffee mug, hold shift, select the extra part just here. And we're just going to left click on it again. And now we can get our handles and we can look at now sizing this down a little bit. So just click the top right one. Let's just move that down very uh, slightly. And I'm just going to hover over the center here, pick that up, just move it to the center here. I'm just going to size that down just a little bit more. And just move it up a little bit. Okay, and that looks pretty good. I'll just size it down just a tad, just so the top here, the steam coming off the coffee doesn't interact with our star. Maybe an issue of tool pathing. And if I click off of that, that looks great. Okay, so now we can go and look at saving our file off so we can then uh, look to run some tool paths on it later. So let's go up to file, save as, and we're just going to call this the five star coffee uh, sign drawing. And there'll be a .crv file, which is indicated at the bottom here. So let's just save that file for the moment. And there we are, so that's ready to then open later if we want to do any toolpathing on this file. Okay, so with our file saved, you can now look at uh, the related video, which will show you how to set up toolpaths so you can actually machine your five-star coffee sign. I hope you have found this tutorial helpful, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.